This is Local Edition. I'm Brad Pomerantz. We are joined by Bob Hoff. He is the GOP leader in the California State Senate. He is also a candidate for the Board of Supervisors in Los Angeles County. But, sir, I'd like to speak and start about an issue in the state, mm -hmm. and that is Proposition 39, which passed in 2012. Give us some background on Prop 39, if you may. Well, it's really inside baseball, but a lot of the businesses, the big businesses that do business in multiple states, oh, there right. was a way they were uh, doing their taxes, which did not benefit California. Right. So Prop 39 sought to close that loophole by making it more specific about how they had to report taxes if they had a physical presence in the state. Right. And at the time, it was Amazon they were going after. Yes, and you were pr pivotal in trying to create a deal so that Amazon would stay put and allow the state to tax it. Right, because they were actually pulling 10,000 jobs right. out of California, the, or not jobs as much as these partners that they had, right. because they the did affiliates. that That would have made their physical presence. Mm -hmm. So we were able to broker a deal which not only kept Amazon here or their 10,000 affiliates, but they have these fulfillment centers now throughout the state so they can get that very rapid response when p customers right. order products. Including in your district, I believe. There may be one or, or just outside just maybe. Just outside okay, the well, district. Okay, well, let's just say yeah. it is. Just outside, yeah, there you go. <laughs> but be that as it may, so Prop 39 passes. Mm -hmm. And what does Prop 39 say in terms of the revenue that is now coming in as a result of closing the loophole? What's supposed to happen with that revenue? Well, half of it was going to go to schools for, um, you know, retrofits right. or making them more energy efficient. Okay. And there was going to be this huge influx of, of revenue, 500 and some million dollars a year. There's going to be open transparency, right. citizen oversight board, all this stuff. And, and then the schools are going to do these wonderful things right. that, you know, make them more efficient. Right? And the other half into the general into fund? Into the general fund. Okay, right. so let's talk about the 50% that's dedicated to schools. Mm -hmm. Recently, uh, the Associated Press issued an article that really sent shockwaves through the building. I mean, I've seen a lot of articles hit, but this one really hit like a ton of bricks, and it caused a Twitter war left, right, and center. Mm -hmm. Tell us about Julia Horowitz's piece uh, issued by the Associated Press. Well, basically, they started digging into, you know, what happens? Because usually that didn't happen. You, you yeah. got the news of this thing passed, and you right. move on to the next <laughs> crisis right. of the exactly. day, right? So this time they look back, and they, they see that, first of all, it's not generating as much revenue. Well, you know, taxes do change people's behavior, so right. that's not unusual. That's actually kind of the norm. Okay. But then with what was happening with the money, they're supposed to be creating 11,000 jobs a year. So that would be 33,000 jobs right. by now. They have created 1,700 that could be accounted mm. for. So, you know, could one argue that there's a ramp up period, mm -hmm. and so while the numbers are low, that you know, let's talk in seven years and mm -hmm. see how job creation is. Is that fair? Right. That's fair, but it would have been more fair to talk about that while they were selling oh. Prop 39 mm -hmm. to the people because that's not what they said. They said it's immediately going right. to be generating all this stuff and. I think the most important part of that is you had the Citizens Oversight Commission or whatever they were called. Yeah. They haven't even convened. Yeah, let's talk about that. Th that was a bit daunting for even the strongest supporters mm -hmm. of Prop 39. Uh, the board was created to oversee the project, submit annual progress reports to the legislature. Mm -hmm. This was passed in 2012, sir. This is 2015. A ramp up period. We'll give them that. Right. But maybe a year? <laughs> maybe a year ramp up to get the board convened? I don't know. Right. I'm just a neutral journalist. But Well, l let's mm. be honest. If you're trying to promote transparency, and the voters lack confidence because this is a pattern that we right. tend to do, right? So you have to get their trust. So to get their trust, you say whatever, and then you don't even convene something. I would argue that the most important time to convene an oversight board is in the beginning sure, to make sure. sure you're getting the parameters set, everything's set on the right glide path. Then perhaps there's less input that you need later on. So who who missed the boat? I mean, is this, did the legislature miss the boat? Did the majority party miss the boat? Did the executive branch miss the boat? I mean, I'm not even sure where to point. Well, that, that truly is a problem, Brad, when uh -huh. you have these initiatives that are written by oh, people right, for yeah. a specific purpose. They're all about the optics of right. creating this illusion of what's going to happen. The specifics, eh, not so right. much. And so we really don't know, you know, whose responsibility is it? And that, you know, I've written legislation where right. I'm requiring one entity to do something, and then later on they say, well, nobody told me to. Well, you have a bill, but 
you know, so you have to be very right. specific and have it all laid out. So and, and you can't change it right. after the fact. So given the intricacies of initiative writing mm -hmm. in California, I guess what you're saying is it, the initiative never said who's supposed to set up this board. Right. But it, th then what, though? I mean, okay, so there was a mistake, but we can't let, you know, billions of dollars just kind of float around without a right. board being set up that's supposed to be set up. Well, I called for Senate hearings yes, yes so did. that we could at least have, yeah. that is something we can do. Of sure. course, the pro tem is the one that needs to convene that. And I think he's on board now? He seems to be on board okay. now for doing something by September okay. uh, to look into this. Okay. And so that's a good thing, right? So once you're aware of a problem, you know, we expect to be responsive to it and we'll see where, where it is. And again, I, don't, I just want to push a bit. So who's supposed to set up the board? Do, is the answer, I don't know, Brad Palmer? I, I, I don't know. I did yeah. not write it, so right. I don't know. Okay. And, you know, next time there's an initiative like that, I will know. Yeah, I, <laughs> that was just very fair. One other point that's caused a little consternation is the amount of money that's been spent on consultants and auditors. Sir, it's very easy to beat up on mm -hmm. consultants and auditors, right. and I don't know the percentages that are appropriate for consultants and auditors. So kind of flush that out for us. Well, when you have half the money going for consultants and auditors mm -hmm. and you don't even have oversight, I think that's problematic. I see, I see. Because that's what an oversight committee ought to be looking at, right? Is this appropriate? Is it not? Because I don't know what it is. Right. But just when you're looking at half the money, which you would believe is going to infrastructure right. to help our schools, you know, energize, power up more right. efficiently, sure. and you got half of it going to people who are just telling them, you know, where right. to dig the shovel uh, for the, you know, the foundation, are, that's a problem. Are you hopeful, though, that now that some light has been shed on this, that the legislature can come together and fix this? Because, look, in the end, it was passed. Prop 39 right. was passed. The money's there. C can we get this right? Can we right the ship? I think the parameters that were written for Prop 39 should be kicking into place now. There will be, I, I don't know what the role of the legislature is, oh, okay. and that, that's specifically how the initiative is written defines what our role would be also. I see. So there may be a pathway for us. I can call for an investigation. Somebody right. else has to implement it, right? Right. But now that, you know, because the pro tem so was so energized, no pun intended, yeah, right, right. in this initiative, I think he will be also energized to help now that it's been, the light's been shined on right. it to make sure that it's moving as it should be. What about the executive branch. Are they involved in this or is this, we don't, yeah, hard they, they don't seem to be. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about your run for Board of Supervisors. Mm -hmm. uh, California Senate districts are the largest districts, I think, of any state legislature. Mm -hmm. So you represent a million people. Mm -hmm. Well, now you're running for a district where there's two million people. You thought you couldn't get any bigger. Right. Talk about your run for Board of Supervisors with two million people bigger than, I don't know, 10 states or whatever it may yeah, be. Yeah, not only is it you know, a lot of people, so it's double the amount of people right. I represent now, but the geography of the fifth supervisor right. district is just huge. Right. I mean, it goes all the way up and down. Yeah, you got around. the eastern part of the right. San Gabriel Valley touching against San Bernardino County and then up in the high desert out there as well. You go up to Kern County on the oh, north, yes. you got Ventura County right. on the west, and it's it's the largest of you know right. all the supervisor districts. And, you know, certainly a lot of challenges there. What are you hearing, though? I mean, I know you can't really knock on two million doors, yeah. but still, you're engaging. What are you hearing? What are folks telling you? This, this is a district that feels left out of the process. Right. You know, they see L.A.-centric right. uh, actions taking place all the time, and they just want to get sure. what they should be getting. You know, they're left out of the process, whether it's San Gabriel Valley, the Antelope Valley, even Santa Clarita Valley. Right. So, you know, they need a representative that's engaged that can take their issues and take them to the county and, and get resolution for them. Do you feel as if when and if you join the board, you can be part of that solution? Because it does seem as if this new board is getting along pretty well. I mean, you know, with term limits, you've seen a little shifting. Sure. And it's going to be a big sea change when we right. lose two veterans that have been there in Mike Antonovich's right. case since 1980. Of course. And then Kanabi's been there since right. the mid-90s. Yeah. So it's going to be a big deal, but, you know, I worked collaboratively for nine years at the local government level and regional government as well. You'll come back? Oh, yeah. He's Bob Puff. He is a member of the California State Senate GOP leader. He's also running for the Board of Supervisors in LA County. I'm Brad Palmer. It's, it's local edition. <laughs> <laughs> that was great.